Wow, what a difference. The Talk Buster Podcast. Hi, I'm Chris Chipman. You may remember me from such podcasts as the Chipman Brothers Tangent and Creating Geeks, a parenting podcast of great responsibility. I'm here to bring you back to the late 90s, early 2000s, a time of AMRAs and clamshells, a time of late fees and VHS tapes being replaced by DVDs, a time of stale gumballs and overpriced candy. Yes, that's right. I am talking about the time of Blockbuster Video, the Walmart of the video rental industry, the mom and pop video store killer, the corporate big choice video store that everybody loved to hate. Blockbuster is mostly gone now. Kids today will never know the crazy Friday and Saturday nights with lines wrapped around the store to rent the next big movie. No more will regulars who are in the know arrive at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays to snatch up the new rentals that week before the weekend rush. Most of all, no longer will young movie geeks like myself have the memories I, and many others like me, made while working there. You see, under all of the corporate evil and bad practices, Blockbuster was a home, a comfort, a place where I made lifelong friends and even met my wife. It is because of these memories that I, and I'm sure many of you, have that the Talkbuster podcast was created, a place for me and others to share our memories of what once was, of the before time, of the long, long ago. I'm looking forward to see where this goes, how it evolves. Join me, won't you? Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another fun-filled episode of the Talk Buster Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Chris Chipman, a.k.a. The Chippa, and I have another very, very special episode for you guys today. Before we get into who today's guest is, I'd like to thank my $15 or more a month patrons. They are Mason, Christopher Finnick, Patricia Chipman, Hugh K. Campbell Jr., Alex Peregrine, Kevin C.V., Mike the Gatherer, Tyler Freshcorn, Mark Price, collaborating online, Alex Shaw, Seth Comfort, Seth Decker, Andrew Krauss, Robert V. Aldrich, Aaron Moriarty, Carolyn Thompson, Scott Arcuri, Shore Hanson, Gusted, and Geeks with Shields. Thank you all so much for allowing me to do what I love to do here. I would do it anyway, but your support makes it all the more um, doable um, with the busy life that I have. Um, and today's episode, um, because we have a very special guest, a guest that I haven't spoken to on this show in about eight months, and we've lived through an entire pandemic since then, um, this is brought to you by the Blockbuster Store in Bend, Oregon, the last one in the world in the film, The Last Blockbuster Documentary, which I'm going to be talking to the star of on this episode again um, for the fifth time. Sandy Harding, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me back on your program, Chris. Absolutely. Um, th thank you so much for, for the support and vice versa. I, I love talking to you guys. And uh, it's been um, it's been a really fun uh, partnership, friendship, whatever, whatever you call it. I, I love you guys and I love you and I love you coming uh -huh. on here. So thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. And I can't believe it's been eight months. My goodness. Right. August. It said last chat at eight months ago. I'm like, it wasn't that long. It was like three months ago. And then I'm like, nope. <laughs> that's how that works. Oh, that's crazy that that was the last time. So it, it it's interesting how we we kind of uh, cycle in, um, you know, your store, even though it's constantly in the news and everything, in these little pockets of interesting that seem to be happening around the times we talk. The last time we spoke, it was right at the announcement of the Airbnb that happened in your store, and. Yeah. Um, Everybody thought you were closed and, oh, you know, the store is becoming an Airbnb. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. And it's like, no, you came on to be like, no, we're still here. This was just a fun thing we did. I don't know what you all are talking about. Um, me and Taylor and I remember a bunch of people online were all like sharing around. No, 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 they're still there, guys. This is just for fun. Like, leave it alone. Yeah. And it, it was a great episode. And we got to talk a, a lot about that and about you having you know, finally seen the film and everything. And now here we are eight months later. And uh, from what I can see from, you know, articles about you online and talking to you, you know, offline, you guys are, uh, are still doing as well as can be uh, expected for a, you know, singular retail store in the, in the middle of a rough time. So let me know more about that. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's definitely a sink or swim scenario for us. Uh, Cause just when things start to, to quiet down and slow down and we kind of take a, a step back and usually when we're shorthanded which all of you blockbuster people will understand it always uh, you know blizzard when it was when we were short staffed um 
but yeah, it, it's been, it's been very crazy. Um, good, crazy, uh, with spring break and then Netflix, um, you know, having a documentary on there at the same time, it definitely created <laughs> a lot of, uh, a lot of foot traffic in the store. Um, I think we're all pretty tired and, and ready for me to, to go on another vacation. Um, <laughs> but no, you know, it, it's kind of a funny thing. It, it feels weird. Cause you know, three years ago, well, almost three years ago, three years in July, when this whole thing started for us, I thought, oh man, that's it. You know, we're, we lost one in America. Oh gosh, another year. And, and what's going to happen to us. And now here we are almost three years later and every six months or so something else is going on and we're cycling back through the news. And we are so grateful because, you know, that, notoriety that we have, I guess now, and, and all of that, um, publicity that we get is definitely helping the store and, and helping people remember that we're here and, and helping support us. Um, so we're very grateful for it. Um, but it does create a lot of chaos in the store when it hits. And, and I swear it, no matter how much planning I do, I am always short staffed when this stuff happens and it just always makes me laugh. Oh, a- absolutely. And you know, I, I, I love when you share, you know, hey, because it's it's good, both good publicity and a good reminder of people that, you know, everybody wants everything to be a click away nowadays. Yeah. And so people are like, I just heard there's a blockbuster left. So I want to have a personal experience and buy something from them. And it's awesome that they sell it. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, you got to remember that there's a small select group of people making and sending those things to you. This isn't oh, yeah. some corporate warehouse. And I love it when you share those videos and you share the pictures of here's me packing everything or in, in the movie, here's me making the beanies, <laughs> you know? Well, and right now, you know, and, and I think the last time we talked, we were flooded with orders then too. And, and we're back in that same scenario. And, um, we had to, you know, move everything out of the back room because it literally, as you saw in that picture, it is a tiny little, you know, 10 by 10 room that we do the online orders out of. And obviously with the amount of product we have coming into the store to fill the orders we have, we could not, <laughs> we could not fit it all in our back room. And so um, we actually took over another little space in the same building that we're in um and ryan's pretty excited that he gets to spread out a little bit doesn't feel quite so claustrophobic and of course dan is happy that he doesn't have you know boxes of of sweatpants in his window anymore but uh, <laughs> you know it, it's a good thing it, it helps our whole community and, and we're, that's probably the part that we're the most proud of because everything is sourced locally and you know even if we don't actually get it made in town if we have to get it from somewhere else we're buying it from a local company so we're kind of sharing the the funds, you know, I'm not going on Amazon or anywhere like that and ordering, you know, 10,000 t-shirts. I'm ordering it through a local vendor so that we can kind of keep the money within Bend. So, you know, awesome. it's a good, it's a good double-edged sword because, you know, we're grateful that we have the opportunity to, to share the love, but it also means that we run out of product quickly, especially when we have, you know, 5,000 orders. <laughs> so of course. It, it creates, uh, it creates a little bit of chaos, but we're getting through it and everyone is so wonderful and patient. And, and once we explain to them that, you know, things are made locally and that we're doing it ourselves and we don't have a, a big, you know, distrib- distribution warehouse somewhere doing it for us. It's all, you know, every package I was packaging for three hours today by myself when, cause everybody else had to, to leave. And I probably did, you know, about a hundred boxes myself today. And so everyone is packed with one of my employees and, and lots of love. So. And, and that's, that's so unbelievably cool, you know, cause three years ago when, when we first uh, connected with each other, you know, over, over, over you guys being in the news and, you know, my show getting out there, you know, you still had to call the store to order yeah. stuff. And you were like, we're still trying to figure out how we can ship, but you seem like an awesome guy. So call and we'll figure it out, you know, yeah. and all, and I'm like, it, it's so awesome to have seen how much it's grown and to be I won't call it on the sidelines because, because I feel like, you know, it, it, we're all part of the narrative here. You know, anyone that was a fan of this, anyone that's still, you know, in love with it can share in this now. But like when there was a blockbuster everywhere, you never thought about this. You never really no. thought about even when you were working there, how it could be gone someday or how it would ever stop being busy. So to be like, you know, when I heard about you guys and it was in the news, you, you said it goes in like fits and waves, right? Like people would find yeah. my show and I'd get people being like, oh, this is so cool. And, you know, I, I'd, I'd be running around talking to people saying, no, that look at this shirt. There really is one left. 
But when this movie hit, and it wasn't when Taylor was pushing it so hard and we were all pushing it, even though it got a lot of love from there. But when it hit Netflix, it like became a, um, it became a phenomenon. It, like it, be, it took on a life of its own. People made up in their mind who directed the movie and that it was <laughs> Netflix coming to like give a middle finger to Blockbuster one last time. And I always loved talking to Taylor about it. And that's Taylor Morton, the director of the movie for people who are hearing this the first time. Cause he would go, eh, whatever, man, I'm just going to play along with it. <laughs> and I'm like, this is great. <laughs> it, it makes me all, it makes me chuckle too. And I always kind of laugh because inevitably I always get a phone call from, for someone who wants to interview me about it, who hasn't actually watched the movie yet. Mm. And so then they'll, add, they'll, you know, start off with, well, since we know that Netflix killed Blockbuster and I'm like, yep, you didn't watch the movie <laughs> like, because if you did, you would know that that wasn't entirely true. Um, or they, you know, they say different things and I, and I just kind of laugh and they're like, well, are you in the movie a lot? I heard that you're in the movie a lot. And I'm like, yep, you didn't watch the movie. Yeah, so you did not watch the movie. I, I, I'm the star. Nope. Well, <laughs> I get, I get the privilege of being the face of the store. That's for sure. But I, I can think it's awesome. That it's definitely a team effort, and I could not do it without those kids working with me day in and day out, answering the phones. Right now, they're uh, doing an incredible job. I had to talk, stop taking phone calls at the store because uh, as much as I appreciate all the love that I'm getting from all over, it got to the point where I couldn't not be on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, yep. And I'm like, um, guys, remember, as you saw in the, in the show, that I'm still working every day, and I'm still, you know working those eight and 10 hour days trying to get everything done. I can't be on the phone all day. So unfortunately I, I can't take as many phone calls as I was. So a lot of people are sending me emails and text messages and, and, you know, messenger messages. And I appreciate all of those. And it warms my heart to know that there's so many fans of our store out there. Um, and I wish I had more time to spend talking to people. Um, but you know, it unfortunately is what it is. I, I still have a job I have to do. Absolutely. And that's why I'm, I'm always honored that you give me the time and I try to uh, give those people a voice so they can hear you speak, you know, more than, yeah. you know, a, a five minute clip on a, on a late night thing, even though those are great to see too. It's always awesome. I'm like, oh, look, there's Sandy again. She's having a good time. <laughs> I know it's so much fun. It's so fun. And, and it's really crazy because there are some of those um, people that reach out and interview me that this is like the fourth or fifth time they've interviewed. And I'm like, Oh, we're on a first name basis with, you know, so-and-so from this network or that network. And it makes me kind of laugh. And my husband's like, I can't believe you know who that person is or, you know um, anyway, I won't, I won't name drop anybody, but it's just really fun when I get text messages and my husband will be like, who's that? And I'll, I'll be like, Oh, it's Bloomberg that just called or, or just texted me. And he's like, seriously, and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool. So anyway, it's, awesome. it's a lot of fun. So it's awesome. And to be in like, and the buck stops with you and, and the folks out there. Right. So it's not like, yeah. it, it's weird to, and I know you've said before being in the middle of it, it's kind of surreal. So you don't really notice it, you know, like how, you know, big it can be when you get the right group of people in a room talking and they like, I've talked to people about this documentary and they go, Oh yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, they think it's like a real world kind of thing where it's kind of like stage and it's like, so you know, and it's like, no, 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 literally it is the last store. It still functions. They don't, yeah. it's not just there and like open for two hours. Cause it's fun. You know, it, it's not like a museum piece, you know, or anything like that. It's, it's there. So it's kind of funny. Cause, um, people will come in and I'll be working the counter or do stuff. And, and this week it's been all about the online order. So we got, you know, two huge pallets of boxes in to ship out stuff and we're unloading the boxes. And of course it's the same day that we got the extra space to move into, but they delivered them in the storefront and we have to go around the building to get where we're at. So we were having to load them in the back of my pickup and my mom's car. And then we were driving it around to the back of the store. And so all of us, and it was a bunch of girls, and we're all out there, you know, undoing these pallets and throwing them in there. And there's this guy that had come in from Georgia, and he wanted to to meet me and talk to me, and he wanted a selfie. And he's like, well, can I help you guys? I'm like, no, 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 you just enjoy the store. And he's like, no, I promise. He goes, let me help you. And the only thing I need is a selfie with you afterwards. So he helped us um, the whole thing and put it in my truck and everything. It was really sweet of him. And then we took a selfie when we were done. So um, but it's just that kind of stuff where people come in and, and I think that they're surprised that I'm actually like there in a ponytail and, you know, my tennis shoes and we're like, you know, unloading boxes and, and working. It's like, I don't know, it, it's weird to me 
to think of all these people because they come in and we're like, oh, you're you're the star of the movie and and you're a celebrity now and everybody knows you. And I'm like, well, OK, but I still have a job to do. So yeah. and, let's keep and, going and, here. Right. But, and if and I don't very, keep doing this, all of that goes away. There you go. <laughs> you know, and it, it's just kind of funny. And um, yeah. But anyway, it's been pretty um it's been pretty fun. And, and there are some, I mean, the best part of my job, and, and you know this from working at Blockbuster, the best part of our jobs is, is being able to talk to people about movies and about the love that they have for the store and whatnot. And I don't get to do that nearly as often. But, man, let me tell you, there's been some stories this last week that people have come in and told me that have definitely choked me up. And, and I have cheated a couple of times and given a few hugs when I know I'm not supposed to. But Oh, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's just amazing how much the story touches people. It, it is, and it's amazing how many people it's reaching because you never know. Like, you, you can put your, your heart and soul into something like this, and it just might hit wrong. And especially with the pandemic and the rollout not going, you know, the way anybody would ever intend for a movie. You no. never know how it's going to get to people. And I I moderate um, two of those blockbuster fan groups now because the guys that run them just love me because, you know, of conversations like this, right? This is yeah. just, you know, and I, the, the influx, the minute that thing hit on Netflix, it's like, you look down at your phone, you need to approve eight new members. And five minutes later, you need to approve 15 new members. And I'm yeah. like, it's always, I saw the documentary on Netflix. Like, why, why are you here? And I'm like, wow. Like, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's so cool. And has it, um, obviously, you know, t- tourism, you get people that come, from far away to be there, but even in your little community, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the majority of people in Bend know this store is there, but have you seen even an influx in like locals that have like caught it and are coming out there or is it, uh, yeah, know, that less common? a lot of the locals that come through, um, they're, they're coming in now and, and they're just chuckling like, well, we got to get a selfie with you so I can prove to, to my family that I really do come in the store and, uh, you know, stuff exactly. like that. Exactly. That makes me kind of laugh, but no, I mean, we've always had um, wonderful community support and, you know, we can't do it without them because the tourism, you know, it's great right now, but there's been many, many years that we didn't have that. And there will be years after this that we'll need to continue having that support. So um, Bend has been fantastic and, um, and yeah, we get new renters in all the time. So it's a good thing. That's awesome. Um, so how, um, being in a movie store, you know, and, 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 you know, even though it's the last of its kind movie store, you know, at least with the blockbuster name, this has been a weird time for movies. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm just like completely ecstatic to be talking to you today and to hear you say that, you know, you're still there and you're still going because many things have come around to try to stop that. Right. This pandemic oh, yeah. being the, the biggest of them all, but I, you know, just got my second vaccine a few weeks ago um me me and my brother did and you know he's a movie critic so he hadn't him and i haven't been in a movie theater for a year you know or more than a year and so for his 40th birthday i got him tickets for him and i to see godzilla versus kong and it was scary to go back into a theater you know just it's a year of fear right no matter what like you know we we managed to be lucky and not get sick and we both did it the right way and it felt great. I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, you know, well, the, the theatrical experience was dead a long time ago. And yeah, there, there's something to be said of that. That's how people thought about Blockbuster, you know. But now we're talking about Blockbuster in a completely different light now, right? And, I, and not being in a theater for a year and not thinking I'd ever go back or not thinking the theaters would be there again. It was like a like brand new spring day walking in there. I felt like a million bucks. And... I don't know if you've, obviously there's still a wave to hit the crest of, right? You know, people aren't all out in droves again and things aren't fully safe again. But are you feeling a little of that with like newer films being announced and knowing that, you know, you're not going to have to be like, you know, scraping the, okay, yeah, Netflix put this out on DVD as well, kind of a thing for just promotion. Or is it just kind of like always been felt just as good no matter what? No, You know what I I mean? Definitely in the last year has been it been scary. And I think if you talk to any of the small video store chains, they'll tell you the same thing or, or not chains, no, but mom and pops, um, because there haven't been any movies coming out. And I know that, you know, if you walk in our store right now, it's 
we had to get very creative. Let me mm. tell you, there's nothing coming out. So you walk in and, and the top shelf all the way around the store has, you know, the uh, display boxes up there. They're just blank with the last blockbuster spelled all the way around the store. And then the bottom shelves all have just blank yellow ones on them because there's not enough movies to fill the shelves. And yeah. so they have, you know, in our employee pick section that we usually have on an end cap now is like a whole bay in the back wall. And we also had a big, you know, Academy Award section. We pulled all the old Academy Award movies from the past, you know, decades and put this big Academy Award section together of, you know, we don't have a lot of new releases, but hey, don't forget these are there. And so we've had to get very creative in the store and the kids have had fun with it um, in the last year. And those are things that, you know, to say that the pandemic has been the biggest thing to hit us um, would be, it wouldn't necessarily be true because right. I mean, we've had Netflix, we've had Redbox, we've had so many things. And to be honest with you, it, I think because we've had all of those challenges since Blockbuster started getting into trouble, you know, a decade ago, um, we've just kind of learned to roll with the punches and okay, well, we don't have a lot of new releases this, this month. So what are we going to do? And I think that that's part of how we've, um, as a small company been able to, you know, persevere over all of these things is because we just roll with it. We don't panic. We don't, you know, overanalyze it. We just go with it and be like, okay, what can we do next? And, and I think that, um, those things have helped throughout the years, keep us calm and, and push through and, and see what happens. But, um, yeah, it, it's very strange to not have a lot of movies coming out theater, but I also feel like, like you said, going back into the theater, I think that people, especially with COVID right now, are really appreciating those social things that we maybe took for granted before. Yes. The, you know, and and not just about going and seeing our families, because I know we're all dying to do that too and travel, but also just being able to go to the movie theater, go out to dinner. You know, we don't have everything open here yet. Um, and so I don't even think that our theaters are even open for 25% capacity. I know that they're getting ramped up to do it, but they haven't opened. Um, kids aren't even going back to school full time until I think the 12th or the 15th. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're, we're just starting to, and now today on the news, it was talking about how we might have to, to go back into a high risk category because we've had a little bit of a surge here in, in our oh. county. Um, but we knew that that was coming too. I mean, there's those new variants and, and yep. after spring break, there's always going to be, you know, those things. And Oregon's a pretty popular place to come to. So, you know, we were kind of expecting that. We've had some beautiful weather. So, um, you know, we've, we've kind of expected that. But I think that, again, back to what my point was that I think people really are missing those social things. And they're gravitating back to the simpler stuff, like going to the movie, going to dinner, going to the video store, just getting out of your house um, and seeing other people's smiling faces. I think we're all really wanting to do that. So, I think that uh, you're going to see more people wanting to that. And we, we're pretty grateful because even though we're not full capacity, I can't tell you how wonderful people have been that have traveled in to see us. They're all respectful. They're always all doing social distancing. They're all wearing masks. You know, we have hand sanitizer. We, everyone's being so respectful to try to keep our store safe. It's been really great. Isn't that awesome to find like that you're in a scenario in a situation where people inherently just aren't selfish about it. No. Like, it, it's amazing. Because, you know, I live near Salem. That's where my blockbuster was. And Salem is a tourist town. And it, it's so unfortunate because there's so many great small businesses there that mm -hmm. want to do this right. And the influx of tourists, the town just, it, it, it attracts great people. And it also attracts people that, you know, it's just for the fun of going there and being loud and being wild and, you know, saying you came to, you know, the, the scary town, you know, or whatever, and acting like a jerk. And, you know, it, it, it's ruining it for a lot of people that are lifers there that are, you know, my friends are just like, we just want to get back outside and go to the local theater when it opens again and go to the, you know, Count Orlock's Nightmare Gallery and see all the wax dummies, you know, or whatever it is. And you just can't because you never know what person's just going to, you know, just show up and be complaining that, it, you know, it's their right to not do the rules. And it, it's, I just love hearing from somebody that you're in a business and everybody's coming and coming far and with probably a little bit of, I won't call it selfish intent, but a little bit of, there's something I really want to see and I'm really excited about it. And they're not letting that excitement take over the fact that it's still a business and you still have to respect it or it won't be there. And I think that's well, great. We 
I can I can honestly tell you that the majority of the people that have stopped me for selfies, um, they're always like, oh, you know, can I put my arm around you? I've had both my vaccines, you know, and they're like people will call and be like, you know, what's they'll ask, you know, how things are in our area and be like, oh, I just got my, you know, we're just getting vaccinated. Now we're going to come see you. So, I mean, people are I think it's because people know how um, I don't really want to say delicate because that's not really the right word, but you know, that our business is fragile and yeah. so they, they want to keep it safe. They want to help us keep it open. That's the whole point of coming and seeing the last store. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful that they're doing that throughout the rest of the community, but I know they're definitely doing that for us. And even out front, you know, outside taking pictures, people are respectful of each other. And, and I watch as people wait to take turns in front of the store to take selfies and, and they've all got their masks on and, and it's just really nice to see it. So. That's awesome. I'll tell you, you know, us, as a you know country a world a community whatever getting um closer to the other side whenever that is you know of this it just gets me excited because i had plans to come out and visit you guys before this happened so i can't wait and yeah. and to know that you're still there woohoo that makes me even happier we might even have t-shirts when you get here <laughs> awesome I, I actually i have an order in process um oh do you and i am in no way uh you know care about receiving it it's there to support you you know i it, i there was a shirt in the sequel to the game which i could yep. easily go and pick up at target but i'm like you know what no i gotta get all my stuff from them because uh because it's awesome well thank you for that and we're we are moving hard we're about two weeks behind but we're oh we're, no worries at all it it it's uh it, it'll i, I like it because it makes it be a surprise we have too few surprises nowadays yes we you know? do <laughs> Every, everything just shows up immediately. I like surprises. Um, well, yeah. And I'm actually, as we're talking, making a beanie too. Um, that, <laughs> that is, uh, I, I can tell you that I was uh, pleasantly surprised and a little scared when I uh, took a look at the beanie orders. So Ryan was monitoring it. And when I was gone out of town, I, he called me and I was like, so you know, how many beanies do I have? And he's like, oh, you're about 200. And I'm like, okay, that's doable. That'll take me a couple of weeks. I can, I can do that. And, and then by the next morning, it was, I'm not kidding you, Chris, 620. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So we obviously put it on back order on the website. Um, and I can honestly tell you that that's going to take a little while, but I've got a waiting list going too. And I've told people that have come into the store asking about it. I'm like, okay, it's going to take me, you know, a good, you know, three or four months to get these done. So you might get your beanie if you, if you're on a waiting list by fall, just in time for next year. I'm it's like, because such... I make all of these myself. I'm like, this is crazy. And maybe, I have maybe... other... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I have other, you know, blockbuster moms, the kids that work for me, that they, their moms are like, what can we do to help you make your beanies? Because this is crazy. Um, so I do have some other blockbuster moms that may be stepping in to help me out. But as of right now, I'm still making them all. It's insane. And, you know, maybe I shouldn't say that it's an incredible beanie because, <laughs> no, but I will say it, it really is. And and that, you know, I, I ordered it early on because I saw them and said, I'm like, I got to have that. And then I remember that I had bought it before I spoke to you the first time live, you know, on the show yeah. and you, and you dropped, you know, that factoid that you made them all. And I was like, that makes it even cooler, you know? <laughs> well, and I think you have one of the original ones that had the patches that I cut yep. out of the shirts. Um, yep. Like, and before I even started making, now I have them that are two different sizes, but, and I, there's actually a wonderful company here in, in Bend that was able to reproduce those exact patches um, from the old polo shirt. So they're exact same size, everything. So they're great, um, that I have to put on the, the hats, but I know it's just so, it's crazy to think how many beanies I've had to make. Um, and, and let me tell you, like I've told you many times, it was never meant to be a side business or my little side hustle at a blockbuster. It nope. was meant to be something fun. <laughs> uh, but anyway, and that, that's, that's a fun thing to remind people, right? As they see that, you know, <laughs> forgetting that that was one of the things when, when blockbuster is a corporate entity was getting a little um, weird near the end. That was something yeah. you saw a lot of was branded shirts and DVD players and stuff for sale. And like all this stuff that didn't really seem to fit, but people see it now and they go up, oh, there it is. You know, someone better go on the site and buy it. Now they're selling. I'm like, guys, like they've literally been selling stuff for like four years. 
Like yeah. if this, this is not the sign that they're going anywhere. Right. Yeah. You know, like this is a good thing. This is a like supporting local businesses thing and, uh, you know, way to give you a keepsake because it is now a only place in the world destination. You want to buy something and go home with it. Don't you? Yeah. Right. Uh, well, and it's, it's so cool that, you know, cause yeah, every time I, I turn on the TV, I keep seeing, Oh, Walmart's got blockbuster t-shirts now. And yep. this does and that person does. And I, it just makes me laugh because Although, yes, it supports the store, and I'm grateful for every order that we have. Just the fact that people are out there wearing Blockbuster stuff and reminding people that we're still here and remembering the brand is all a good thing. So um, so I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the Blockbuster love. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, no, b- believe me, as, a, uh, as someone that's never stopped loving it and always been called crazy for that, it's great to see <laughs> so many people coming back to it and going, oh, yeah, no, right? All that stuff you always said, I, I watched that movie and now it's like, I get it. And I'm like, yeah, so, so my enthusiasm didn't do it for you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, but the, the movie really does capture that. You know, I can't, I can't say enough good things. I, my, my buddy Jim, um, had a stroke in November and okay. he, he had done the, he, he's, he's better. I, I'm now his caretaker and helping him get services and I'm his health proxy and it's a whole giant thing and i'm he's 49 he shouldn't be dealing with this stuff but he is no. and he did the sound for my live talk buster show um two summers ago and i had always told them you know wait until you see this movie like i've been talking to the person in the store i'm talking to the director and everyone and so at his house a week ago we got to sit down and pop on you know the last blockbuster when it was on netflix and he was like wow he's like you know i haven't thought of that place aside from listening to your show he goes, and that was it. Like that movie did it. That's it. <laughs> like that brought me right back. Well, and, that was and- the, that was a wonderful thing. That's the one thing I keep hearing the most of is that we are still the same. Like they they watch the movie and they remember being a part of the store, like the ex employees and stuff, and how it just brought back that family, you know, the familyness of being a part of the blockbuster store. So, anyway, sorry. Of course. Edit. No, no, and, and that that's what's so great. Now, I, I also wanted to congratulate you because um, either one show ago or two shows ago, you being on, you were saying, you know, you know, your biggest like hope is that you'll be open long enough to rent the movie, yeah, right? And you've done that. Yep. And from what I heard from Dave Carrera, you may or may not have it for rent on VHS. Is that true? We don't have it for rent. We do have VHS copies in the store. Um, That's we awesome. We few copies that I signed and we're dying to decide what we're going to do with them because we only have a very limited amount. Of so course. So my friends are like, we should auction them off. <laughs> and they're, anyway, it's kind of funny. It, anytime someone comes in and asks for my autograph, I just chuckle because I'm like, okay. And that, it's so, so wild, right? It is. And it's like, if you only knew me, if you only knew that right now I'm sitting here at home with no makeup on and my hair in a ponytail, my pajama pants, making a beanie, watching true crime TV shows. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like every other old grandma in, you know, in America. So it just makes me laugh that someone wants my autograph. But well, I, I, I think it's awesome. And, and I, you know, it, it became weird having, because you don't like, okay, you ask for, you know, like a, a big, and I don't, not to put you not in the same category, but it's like, you know, I was thinking when, cause you know, Shamim like was one of the people, Oh, have you asked Sandy for her autograph yet? And he, he loves autographs. He's just the, the nicest yeah. guy. And I said, you know, I never even thought of asking her and, <laughs> and not that not it's just, it's not like the first thing that pops into my head. Cause it's like, I've had these recordings like, you know, but I'm yeah. like, you know what? No, that'd be a cool thing to have. And it, it was so nice that you did that. And, um, you know, I I have a, that movie uh, copies of the movie to still give away that have those autographs because you know pandemic it's hard to get people to to put money down on something I get it but I'm using that to boost my little tiny silly business here too but uh, it'll be quite a keepsake for someone because it's got you and Taylor and me. Yeah, well, and you know what? Um, if that, I mean, that's the whole point of this. I mean, yes, to help our store, but it's also just to bring a smile to other people because you're right especially right now with the pandemic and everything and the whole state of a lot of things, everybody could use a big smile. And if we can do that and if I can help you with your business and I can help somebody else with theirs or, you know, me just signing an autograph brings a smile to their face. Um, 
then it's worth it. All of this is worth it. All the, the craziness and um, <laughs> the late night podcasts, um, yeah. all of that is worth it if, uh, if it brings a smile to someone's face. So, And it's so know. cool, like you said earlier, to see it taking on wings of its own, right? Because, yeah. you know, I, you like you said, there were pockets, and but you're working. You know, you're busting your butt every day. And if you don't do that every day, you know, for you, there's no business anymore. So mm-hmm. to to hear the, you know, oh, you know, the the T-shirts that, you know, other people have licensed the logo. And so they're out there wearing it now. And then people are grabbing all of that because of this, this blip about the movie and equating it all to you. Yeah. And that's like, that's when it, you really know. It's like the, the you, you kept turning the crank and then the <laughs> perpetual motion machine took over a little bit. So it gives you a little bit of, you can stand back for a second, maybe for a second and go, wow, that's really cool. And I don't think any of us, when it was a big, big deal, you know, that were there ever thought we'd be having these kinds of, these nostalgic time capsule style conversations. But that's really what I'm trying to do is is make a time capsule. I'm sure you remember that, you know, we still enjoyed our jobs. We loved our jobs and whatnot. But when Blockbuster started getting in real big trouble... And you were going somewhere and somebody asked where you worked. You always kind of cringed a little bit before you said it because you were expecting that, oh, you're working somewhere. They're going out of business. What do you yeah. say? You're looking for another job and all those things. And now, you know, it's the total opposite of that where somebody asks I, where I work. I, I almost don't want to tell them because I don't. I know that the next thing I'm going to have is, you know, that big, long conversation. And and they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, it's you, which I've I've had several people do lately. And <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, and I, I make my husband, I'm like, no, today's our day off. We're not talking blockbuster today. And it just makes me laugh that we've gone from, you know, the days of cringing because we didn't want to have people tell us that we're going to lose our jobs to, you know, now the store is famous and, um, and we're holding everybody's hopes that we keep going. And I don't know, it, it's a really wonderful feeling, but at the same time, it, it's just so bizarre. So bizarre. <laughs> it's really bizarre because it doesn't fit. It doesn't yep. fit with where we've where we've made it to, um, in in media and in entertainment. It, it's it's like a weird holdover, almost like a t- you step back in time for a few minutes. Even just talking talking about it or looking at pictures of it, I go, this can't still be here. Like <laughs> this doesn't make sense. It'd be like walking into a McDonald's and seeing you know the apple pie tree, you know yeah. that they used to have on the wall, and being like, this isn't right. <laughs> like or the Hamburglar, you know, yeah. So. Yeah, um, we saw them. We were kids. Um, no, you're right, and and it's just because we're in the store and we work, you know, day in and day out and do our jobs and everything. It's just it's weird to think that us doing our jobs every day has created so much buzz and so much attention. Um, it's I don't know. It's it's just such a strange, strange feeling for me. So, but like I said, the it's great for our community. It's great for our store. My staff is loving it. Um, and, uh, so I'm enjoying watching them smile all the time too. So it's good. Well, I have a big smile on my face. Just talking to you. Um, <laughs> I wanted, since, since I know it's late for both of us and I, and I love just catching up with you, you know, I, I want you to be able to get back to your true crime shows and have a little <laughs> break. Um, I wanted to give you a chance, you know, a sounding board to, to say, shout out, um, tell, tell us anything you want. You know, um, just, I just really want to thank everybody out there. Cause I, I know this will reach some people that maybe didn't see it on Instagram or didn't see it on Facebook or, or one of those things, just how much we appreciate all the support and love. And, you know, even if you're not buying something on the website, even if you're, you know, just thinking and, and praying for us, we appreciate all of those things. And we know that, uh, and just know that, yeah, that we feel it and we, appreciate it and we're wishing well for you as well awesome and same here sandy you know i i hope i hope well i i hope to meet you someday for sure i (laughs) hope to meet you when your store is still open which i'm not going to say means i need to work faster but you never know when we could have another thing like we had this year so i'm just going to go with that was a reminder to me to get off my butt and make it happen (laughs) um but I, i i wish you many years of still being able to do this and still um, talk to folks like me and just, uh, keep, keep being happy doing a job that I know made me really happy. And I'm glad to talk to people that are still enjoying it so much. Well, you've got a little while because I can't close until I get all these beanies done. So <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> got a little ways to go. Cause it's going to be, we're gonna, 
We're going to change it to the store title will be Pacific Video Beanie Manufacturing Company while you're still there. Just (laughs) Oh, it's just so fun. Um, But yeah, no, you know, the store is doing fantastic and and it is uh, everybody else's um, hard work and and the fact that so many people are are giving us so much love and and we just uh, just can't say enough about how grateful we are for all of it. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you as always for doing what you do and coming on. Give everybody over there, uh, you know, my regards. Tell Ken, you know, Ryan, everybody else that I'm just so happy they're still getting to do what they love. I will for sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you for making it a Talkbuster night or day. Thank you for joining Sandy Harding from the last Blockbuster in Bend, Oregon and I. As we just catch up a little bit, we'll talk to you soon. Please be kind. Rewind, everybody.